السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة الحمد لله نحمده ونشكره ونستعينه ونستغفره ونتوب إليه إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما We praise God Almighty who is our sustainer. We praise Him. We thank Him. We ask for His guidance. We ask for His forgiveness. And when we fall off that path of mercy and justice and compassion and decency, which is the path of God Almighty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we ask that He brings us back onto that path in His mercy. And we ask that He makes us more forgiving with each other. While we stand up against injustice, against those who are oppressing people, against injustice and indecency. Our prayers for blessings on the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. May peace and blessings be upon him and his family and his companions and all those who follow him as one ummah for God has told us to remain together like we are holding on to one rope but there are challenges to that brothers and sisters let's face it we have yet to achieve that level of discourse in our community that deals with differences of opinion. We have the Shahada, La ilaha illallah, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. We bear witness there is no God but the one God, and Muhammad is the Messenger of God. We have the Aqidah, we have the principles, we have the Quran, 
We have the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But beyond that, we still have disagreements. That's why there are different schools of thought. That's why Imam Shafi lived in Iraq, gave a school of jurisprudence and ideas uh, of, of thought. And then he moved to Egypt and he had different ideas, different applications. And they asked him, why do you have two different books? He says, because these are two different people. So while we have the principles, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us with diversity. Not just diversity of looks, but diversity of the mind, of experiences. The poor will think differently from the rich. The one who lives in gang-infested criminal activities neighborhood is different from the person who lives in luxury that is crime-free. The one who is living in one part of the world is very different in their outlook from the one who lives here in Orange County. So we have diversity of differences and differences of opinion. So there are two important verses that I'd like to dive into that tells us about this issue. It doesn't give us the answer. There's nothing really that gives us the answer. The Quran is text. And what is the beauty about the Quran that created a civilization that led to advancements in science and astronomy and culture and poetry and so many other things is that it was people led by the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that created that civilization. So how do we reconnect so that the human interaction with the text produces the results that we need? The text is the same, but the human interaction is what varies. And that is the beauty of Islam, is that it acknowledges both. The first verse, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم أدو إلى سبيل ربك بالحكمة والموعدة الحسنة وجادلهم بالتي هي أحسن إن ربك هو أعلم بمن ضل عن سبيله وهو أعلم بالمهتدين Invite people to the way of your Lord with wisdom and beautiful preaching. And when you engage with them in discourse or argument, come up with something that is better. Surely God knows who's going astray and who is rightly guided. What are the important points from this verse? There are four that I would like to share with you and I would like to remind myself as we proceed forward in dealing with our, our challenges as an ummah and as a society. The first is, it says, it's, a, it's an imperative. Odo, do it. Call, invite. Invite people to the way of your Lord. It uses the way of your Lord, meaning the way of your sustainer, the one that has provided mercy for you to live with water, with the environment, with housing, with so many things that the sustainer is the one that is providing you for, so you be the provider for people. It's not saying go and convert people to this or that religion or to this or that ideology. That is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the person. We, our job is to make Islam known for what it is. That's our job. And we invite people to do that. I don't like the word propagate. When sometimes, you know, from da'wah, da'wah means you invite a person to your home and you have the hospitality, you treat them as guests, and you have the. It's that warmth. Da'wah is something that is warm. Sometimes the translation is propagate, it's very political. It's very dry. So it is not about propagating necessarily. 
But as we said, it's about making Islam known in the best way, and the best way is by example. If we say Islam is about mercy and justice and compassion, then we have to embody the values of mercy and justice and compassion. Number two, how do we do it as the Quran is, is directing us to with wisdom and beautiful preaching? Why is that important? Because let's face it, brothers and sisters, and it's not just for Muslims, it's for all people. The human nature is to argue and to criticize. That's the human nature. When we fall into our base impulses and base desires, that's what you get. And you find a person who's very angry, that's all you hear from them. <coughs> Argumentation and criticism. Is that person valued? No. But let's face it, we all do that. We all get caught into that trap of argumentation and criticism. And the Quran is telling us, use the Quran to elevate yourself to overcome that problem. By wisdom, think about it, decide what is the wiser approach to take, and ma'idati hasanat, beautiful way of spreading your, your, your word, beautiful admonition, nice, kindly exhortation, tender-hearted, showing the beauty of Islam. So the Qur'an is guiding us in that direction. And then the conclusion of that verse is that وَجَادِلْهُمْ When you are engaging with the other, then come up with something better. وَجَادِلْهُمْ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنْ Come up with a better idea. Come up with a solution. Be a problem solver, not just a troublemaker. And even though this is common sense when we're here, again, the connection to the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is what helps us keep, keep ourselves on that track. But the Quran is telling us, don't just go and chop down what people say, build on what they're thinking and come up with something that adheres to the values of Islam. And so if you find something that is decent, go and build on that. You find something that is just, go and build on that. You find something that is unjust, but you need to find out what is the cause of that injustice. Rectify the problem and then build on that. But this idea of just saying no to everybody and everybody is wrong, the Quran is saying that is not our approach. The Quran is saying our approach, وَجَادِلْهُمْ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنْ You engage them in a way that comes up with something better. And then the last part of this verse is that God knows who's going astray. God knows who's guided. It's not our job to determine who's going astray or who's rightly guided. That's in the heart. And only God knows the heart of every human being. We only see what's on the surface. Somebody may be performing rituals, but is going astray. Somebody may be on the street, you think he's a loser, but maybe he's rightly guided. We don't know. We can judge behavior, we can judge actions, we can develop teamwork to bring people together to a better way, but when it comes to deciding who is rightly guided and who's astray, God is saying, leave that to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is not the job of human beings. It is the jurisdiction of Allah. So it is taking us away from judgmentalism to cooperation on things that are good. That is very important when we think about how we engage each other on areas of disagreement. And let's face it, there's always a disagreement. I remember 20 years ago, people would say, voting is haram. You would have that, and people would be paralyzed. Oh, we, sh we can't vote. It's forbidden. And so you had the pro-vote and the anti-vote, and then paralysis and polarization. Women were not part of the mosque. Someone would come and say, oh, it's haram for women to be seen 
in the mosque and immediately polarizes the issue. Or you have people who say, you know, bringing culture is also wrong. In other words, issues are brought that just polarize the situation as opposed to having a conversation about these issues and taking what is good from any of those issues and opposing what is not good. So what the Quran is telling us in order to deal with these issues effectively, you and I and he and she must focus on ourselves, not point the finger at the other. We have the responsibility to, pro to follow the model of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in what? In akhlaq. He came to teach us character. He came to teach us manners. So even when we disagree, we have to disagree with mawaidati hasana, with politeness. So that to me is the core issue that Allah is, is directing us to continuously work on building our character so that we are better prepared in dealing with the social issues that are complex. Nobody has the answer. Let us all take a dose of humility and just admit nobody has answers to the overarching problems of our society today. We're all trying our best. We're all dealing with so many political and social and cultural problems with our youth. Are they engaged? Are they not engaged? Making sure that we have our freedoms and our rights and watching the news and all we hear are negative things. These are complex issues. And nobody has the single answer to say, this is what has to be done. People have different ideas. But the Quran is saying, don't let your human weakness get the better of yourself. Rather, use the Quran to elevate yourself to get your human strength injected into the discourse. And even with the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, you have examples of this issue. There was a time in one of the battles, he told the archers, the battle of Wadid, he told the archers, stay in your position, don't leave it. And what happened? They left it. They disobeyed the Prophet وسلم. They disobeyed him. And it led to almost a catastrophic situation of losing his life. He was almost fatally injured. Yet what was his response to those people who made that mistake? He was lean with them. He was tender with them. He continuously engaged them. He did not disenfranchise them. So if he is able to do that to a group of people that disobeyed him, then we can deal with people that we think are on that wrong path and work to continuously enfranchise the community on these issues. I've been asked to ask you to come forward and make room for people in the back. Thank you. The other thing that the Quran tells us is don't use demeaning language towards each other. Don't use nicknames that hurt one another. And so when I hear terms like, oh, he's, he's an Uncle Tom. He's a sellout. He's this or he's that. The Quran is saying, avoid language that uses nicknames to hurt people. And, you know, we, we joke with each other. It's, uh, uh, you know, that's, that's one thing. But when it is used to polarize a community and to hurt people for what they believe is right, the Quran is telling us to avoid that, that kind of language. And even when we say, Salaamu Alaikum, what does the Quran say? Respond with something better. A person says, Assalamu Alaikum, you say, Wa Alaikum Salaam, Wa Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh. You always come back with something that is better. It means you're paying attention to the other person. It means you're connecting with the other person. It means that you are cognizant and sensitive of your surroundings. So these are the lessons on what to do. Because if we don't, brothers and sisters, if we don't do that, we know what happens. We get fractured, 
There is bickering, there is infighting, and then we lose sight of the bigger issue, the problems that we're all trying to resolve. How can you resolve these overwhelming social, political, cultural issues when you're not coalescing, when you're fractured? And the Quran even tells us to be aware of that possibility. It says, Follow God and His Messenger. Do not get into argumentation that results in hostility and animosity. So the first verse we talked about is telling you what to do. And this verse is telling us what to avoid. Avoid that kind of hostility and animosity with each other. Why? Because you will just become scattered, like the wind will just blow you away. You become that weak. And if you become that weak, then you are not able to deal with Islamophobia. You're not able to deal with foreign policy issues that affect us. You're not able to deal with our freedoms and our liberties and our civil rights. You're not able to deal with war. You're not able to deal with extremism. You're not able to effectively deal with any issue. This is what the Quran is telling us to avoid. Instead, what's it telling us? Wasbiru in the law ma'asabirin. Be patient. So be patient with each other. And it's not just patience that is passive. It is patience that is understanding. Learn to understand each other in what the value is of what that person is saying. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu was a master of dealing with people and prescribing that precise thing that they need to keep moving, to keep developing. And we should follow that example. Otherwise, we will lose respect for each other. And if we lose respect for each other, then we lose the respect of, so of, of society. So it's telling us don't react, but work and build on what, what each other is saying. It's basically saying you can't be understanding without patience, and you can't be understood without understanding. Let me repeat that. You cannot understand without patience, and you cannot be understood without understanding. This is Stephen Covey's one of seven highly effective rules for leadership. So the rule that he came up with maybe what, 15 years ago, is actually in the Quran, 1400 years ago. To, to understand before you're being understood. So brothers and sisters, we are not waiting for a savior to solve our problems, to deal with our disagreements and to engage us in effective discourse. We are the solution. <laughs> It is up to each and every one of us to be a solution for the lack of effective discourse on these issues. If we do that and connect with these two verses, then individually we transform ourselves rather than wait for somebody to transform us. Because we are connecting with the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are connecting with the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when that happens, we become the light for others. We become the light for our community in this darkness. We become the light for society. And the world then looks different. Rather than something that is always bad, we see the positive and we build on that positive. That paradigmatic shift is so critical for the believer to really do the work for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fear, responding to fear, will not improve the situation. But if there is hope, hope from, 
first and foremost, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that will change the conditions for a better America. It is about the American Muslim identity that enriches our community and enriches our society. That is the higher state of being for the Muslim. And that is what we should be striving towards each and every day of our lives. That is our destiny, inshallah. That is a purpose for this, that is the purpose for this beautiful masjid that brings us together to bring beauty, ihsan, to everyone, starting with ourselves. Adu Rabbakum. Alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, wa salatu wa salam wa rasulillah. We praise God Almighty. There is no God but the one God. And may the peace and blessings be on the Prophet, the Messenger of God. May peace and blessings be upon him, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There is a, a metaphor that's used in developing leadership. You take three or four people, and you put blindfolds on them. And you bring an object into a room. And you ask each person who's blindfolded, describe that object. So the object is in there, and each person touches it, and they describe it. One person says, oh, it's very thin, and it has, it's like a rope. Another person said, no, 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 it's very large, because it has a, a large side. A third person says, no, 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 it has huge legs, so it must be something that is uh, crossing a lot of, of area. And uh, a third person said, well, no, 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 it, 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 it has uh, very uh, uh, small uh, whiskers or, or something like that. And so these blindfolded people describe something that was accurate but not complete. The object was an elephant. So if you're blinded by only what you can feel, even though you are accurate and precise, you are not seeing the whole picture. And so that lesson is telling us, you need each other to see the whole picture. You cannot see it by yourself. And of course, we need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to help us be more sensitive and to see that bigger picture for ourselves. So what we are calling for, brothers and sisters, is a declaration that I want you to consider to sign. It is a declaration for effective Islamic ethics in discourse for our community. And there are six points I want to share with you. Number one, we want to follow a course of Islamic ethics and discourse on any issue, whether it be political, social, or religious in nature. Number two, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, gives us a model in dealing with differences of opinion and building common ground among the believers, one based on good manners and ethics in discourse. Number three, Organizations and individuals will naturally conduct themselves based on their own opinions and best judgment with the presumption that groups will approach problems in our society through different lenses of understanding, all of which comprise the spectrum of socio-political cultural diversity in our Muslim community. Number four, we call on ourselves and all to verify any rumor before commenting on conjecture or we shall fall into the trap of perpetuating falsehoods about one another. Number five, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us in presenting a unified front, a front as we approach different sectors in society while there are disparate approaches and philosophies vis-a-vis -vis dealing with public opinion and public policy. We all aim to secure the rights of Muslims and to enrich society with the civic participation of Muslims. And number six, we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to instill humility in all of us as we aim to serve our community and try to address complex issues challenging us at this time. What is at stake is countering 
Islamophobia, countering a culture of youth disillusionment, countering this mentality of war as the only instrument of foreign policy, countering violating the rights of people in order to achieve strength and security for other, countering the sense of indecency that is happening too often. That is our plight. And as the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was reportedly to have said, differences of opinion in my ummah is a blessing. Or something to that effect, effect uh, according to one report of his saying. Allah created us with diversity. Let us embrace it for unity in dealing and serving his cause. Oh Allah, thank you for bringing us, bringing us together in this beautiful masjid. And please unite our hearts for your cause. And please bring mercy into our community in dealing with each other. And let us stand tall against any kind of injustice or indecency. And let Islam be known for what it is rather than what it is not. And let our youth see the power and the strength that can guide them in dealing with their challenges. And bring our community together, men and women, and give blessings on those who have served you, whether they are alive or have passed on, whether they are free or oppressed, whether they are in power or are uh, following in our community.